Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Deal Finders Corners, your weekly property talk show brought to you by Property Filter, hosted by myself, Guillaume Black, your favorite Frenchman, the CEO and co-founder at Property Filter. So it's the UK's highest rated platform to find deals. We are on a mission to empower property investor and our deal sourcer members to find a thousand deals this year, thanks to the Property Filter blueprint. So the purpose for your Deal Finder Corner is to give you the best and uh, the most recent and available resources by inviting expert guests, we'll share with you the latest and most current strategies, tactics, and secrets about what actually works right now in terms of finding and making deals and the reality of systemizing and running a high-performance business in property. So it is my pleasure, really, to introduce to you my good friends, uh, Mark Fitzgerald and Graham Lindley on today's Deal Final Corner. And they are going to tell us about the 10 steps uh, to starting a service accommodation business. And a lot of you have been asking about, you know, service accommodation training, you know, can we have some resources within Property Filter? And we've been asking for recommendations. So I went on and I got Mark and Graham for you today. And um, I know more failed service accommodation businesses than I know thriving ones. There are dozens upon dozens of pitfalls, you know, from tax, misunderstanding, the VAT, uh, Miss channel management and the all you know the all running of the of this hospitality business, and and most people setting out uh, in SA really they are setting out to build a nightmare you know for themselves you know and Mark and Graham don't sell the dream they teach the process they give you the hows of what actually works in making you know making it work from the outset, or salvaging sometimes a uh, difficult situation when required so. Mark is the host of the Property Unleashed podcast, uh, which I was a guest uh, recording this morning. So a bit of a plug, go and check it out as it will be uh, live in a couple of days. Uh, and host quite a few seminars and events for uh, property network community, uh, property investor network, and quite a few others, inspiring, aspiring uh, entrepreneurs and property enthusiasts to unlock their full potentials. He runs a few uh, a few property uh, businesses from rent to rent to lease options and, and, and things like that. And today I teamed up with Graham uh, for the SA. He's built a highly successful property um, you know, business empire that uh, provides him the financial freedom. It also empowers countless of other people to do the same. From humble beginnings, Mark has now become you know, super successful and shared this with others. You will see Mark embodies high energy, unwavering resilience and unwavering belief the belief that he passed on to others. And um, and you'll see that for him, you know, failure is merely the stepping stone to success and he encourage others to adapt the same mindset and transforming, you know, the any setback into opportunity for growth. So an incredible uh, guest today. And as a good as a good blaze to the well is uh, is teamed up with Graham, uh, which is uh, which uh, is a really, really good friend of mine, really helped us at Property Filter when we got started. And uh, you'll see Graham has got uh, cultivated uh, an industry career since uh, starting into a service accommodation sector some eight years ago in 2015. Uh, he wasn't even a world, I believe, at the time. Uh, his entrepreneurial acumen matched with his passion for providing top tier customer experience led to the inception of Prime Short Stays in 2016, a successful property management business that's now scaled to 300 plus units across the UK. His zest for continued improvement paired with uh, his national, uh, in natural ability to spot opportunities for operational excellence gave the birth to a next revolutionary venture, which is GuestFlow. So GuestFlow is a software, but not just a software. It's the manifestation of Graham's vision for a more streamlined, efficient, and customer-centric service accommodation industry built on the principle that uh, made Prime Short Stay such a success. You'll see GuestFlow integrates all uh, processes and system into a single accessible platform. It's primarily aimed to optimize both internal and external communication and tasks, ensuring every guest uh, walk away with a five-star experience. So I'm really looking forward to share more introduce to Graham. So he's not just a property and service accommodation professional. He's really a change maker and uh, continues to push the boundaries of and redefine the standards in service accommodation and uh, in business in general. His commitment uh, to his craft, his drive and innovate uh, will, will show you know, super experience and will be truly inspiring. So what you can expect for this uh, episode, you know, incredible value from uh, Mark and, and uh, Graham. And uh, I hope we'll have some time for Q&A and we can get access to these two incredible friends of mine. And so without further ado, it's, uh, I'm really looking forward to hearing more about uh, their talk today. So please give a massive welcome to Mark and Graham. Woo. 
Thank you very much. I mean, what an intro that was, eh, Graham? Uh -huh. Yeah. I had, I, had to, I had to do some study, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. I'll, nice. I'll start at the moment. Um, so we are a bit of a duo here. So I shall go through some of the key things on the slides that we'll be sharing with you, and then Graham will give his insights as well. Um, and it's absolutely amazing to be here. So thank you very much for um, the opportunity to come and speak to you fine people today. We are going to be covering, you know, the 10 core steps that we really think that you need to be looking at when starting a serviced accommodation business. And a lot of people are interested in serviced accommodation. You'll hear the buzzword at the moment, which is rent to SA, rent to SA. But there are other ways that you can really successfully build a serviced accommodation business. So let me just start by sharing my screen. A uh, little thumbs up if you can all see that. Happy, happy days. Uh, I've just made sure that we're the same height on this. I'm not saying that Graham's short, I'm just saying that I'm really tall, all right, but I make sure that our pictures are the same height there. Um, oh, jokes aside though, no, uh, it's great to be here. Gilliam, uh, Graham, good friends of mine. And I always say, surround yourself with like-minded people. You might not necessarily be doing the same things or the same businesses, but if you're all pushing yourself forward, if you're all striving to achieve, then you need to be surrounding yourself with people. And it's great to see that you are because communities like this are so, so important. Um, so what to expect today? Uh, we're going to go through a masterclass. It's going to be about 60 minutes long. We will try, well, we will have a Q&A session at the end as well. So if you have any questions, then please do feel free to type those in the chat box uh, or Q&A box or whatever we've got on this fantastic session. And we'll do our best to answer as many questions as possible. We want you to go away from this with as much knowledge, with as much understanding about service accommodation and how to set that up as a business as possible. If I start talking really quickly, it's because I get excited. So I will try and keep that uh, slowed down a bit. I also want to share with you a, a little offer we have at the end. We're not here to give you upsells or anything like that. We are just here to help you if you just need a bit more of a help in hand and an understanding on things. So let's make sure that you give yourself the next 60 minutes because we are going to share with you some quality content uh, and we hope that you'll go away, as we say, from this with a better understanding and knowledge of what it takes to manage and run a serviced accommodation uh, business. So be present with us here, play, take plenty of notes, have a pen and paper ready and let's begin. So a little bit about myself. A fantastic intro already, but I am a father of two sons. I've been married for 19 years and they are my reason why I do what I do. They do drive me when times are hard, when there's problems. I think of my boys and I just think I just want to find the answers. I want to achieve more so that I can show them that they can achieve anything themselves. I hated my day job. I was in a day job for 16 years in the corporate world. I was a production manager for the Swift Group. So if you own a motorhome or a caravan, well, mainly the motorhomes, that, that was the line I ran. But if you had any problems with them, it wasn't me. It was the people that worked for me. That's what I always say. Uh, I've built four property businesses over the last five, six years now, uh, predominantly in the rent to rent sector. So I have rent to rent HMO, SA. I've done purchase lease options. Uh, I do a little bit of deal sourcing. Uh, so property filter, of course, is a fantastic tool for that as well. Uh, and I managed to replace my wage in six months using the rent to rent strategy. I now have time freedom, I have uh, wealth, and I can do the things that I love to do, which includes hosting my podcast, of, of the Property Unleashed podcast. And you're going to have to listen to Thursday's episode because Gilliam's on it. Um, and it, it, it's his second time he's been there. And I just enjoy giving back as well. I enjoy sharing my learning, sharing what you know has helped me get to where I am uh, to help others as well. Uh, and as well as the property business, I am now set up and running a social media content company as well, which I'm hugely excited about. So, you know, you get your property businesses built up, you continue to manage those and, and systemize those. And of course, you can do other ventures as well. So if I can do this, anybody can do this. A little bit about Graham. Are you, uh, you're on mute, mate. Thank you, mate. Um, so, yeah, I, um, I, I spent a long time as a security engineer, basically fitting fire alarms, security alarms, CCTV. I was on the tools. I was out in the van. Um, I enjoyed it. It was a lot of var like variability. But I also kind of I got to the point where I could do it with my eyes closed. And I was looking what's next. It was either going into management, which, you know, I didn't really relish that. I was looking at the guys that were there. Um, not thinking, just thinking that's not for me. Um, I tried, I did try dabbling in, um, in Forex. Um, I was looking for a way to financial freedom. When I got into service accommodation, uh, I got into property first, bought, bought a buy to let. Then I found service accommodation. 
And um, yeah, I think that that was really aligning my skill set of, you know, that engineer within me, finding solutions, processes, all of that. It's a very noisy business, as we say, there's a lot of moving parts. So um, I, yeah, I did build some systems that allowed me to keep running um, the business as I was getting it off the ground and keep my job, uh, which I later quit in 2017. Uh, in fact, I didn't even want to, I, ne I needed a mentor to push me. Uh, and it, I remember him saying, well, you've proven you can do it, but um, at what cost, you know, should you be doing it? Um, in, in other words, at what opportunity expense, you know, if you did, if you spent all of this time you're still working for someone else on your business, where would your business be? And I couldn't answer that question. So I decided to quit. Um, and yeah, uh, the answer was, uh, it, yeah, it was, it, that that was a very good move. It allowed us to scale very quickly and push all the way to, yeah, 150 cities, uh, 150 cities, that'd be great. 150 units across four cities by 2019. So essentially within that first two years of quitting, um, right up until the start of COVID, uh, which obviously had a major impact. Uh, we were at the front end of it in hospitality. So COVID um, really hit us hard. Uh, we had massive cancellations, huge amounts of landlords wanting to take properties back. Um, and, you know, I built good relationships with my landlords. So when they're finding me going, what's going on? I was like, I don't know. If you've got options, take the unit. So um, that really forced us to slow down, um, which was probably a good thing. We grew, in, in all honesty, I've grown a bit of a monster. Um, it was very inefficient. Um, that was that scaling was too quick. So the forced slowdown was really getting us back to that five-star service. And it also meant that because we had the early prototype of what has now become guest flow, which enables our guest comps team to deliver a good service, we knew that other SA companies really struggle for that 24 hour cover. You're either going to an answer phone service or you're getting disturbed as a business owner um, until you get 24 seven. So we used our 24 seven team, uh, which was uh, at risk ultimately, because we were get, because of the slowdown and redu reduced number of units. We, we started offering uh, those guys out as a service to other SA companies. So um, that's now taken us across the, across the UK um and yeah we've got we've even got units so i think there's a portfolio of about 20 units that we're looking after in northern ireland as well so uh yeah that's that's really um it, it did us a lot of good actually and that five star service meant we recruit we recruited a really good team so we're now back um way above where we were 2019 um 2022 we launched uh, overnightly i'm really happy to get that name i can't believe no one ever thought of that name in service accommodation uh, or in hospitality so we've got overnightly.com and it's essentially a booking agency for contractors. So it's a completely separate business, separate team. But we knew we were leaving a lot of money on the table. We'd have contractors come and stay with us and then they'd be off to Bristol, for example. Um, so now we not only can look after those guys, but we're proactively looking for contractors that need accommodation. Of course, um, we prioritise our own units. Um, and then guest flow, as, uh, as mentioned, it's been really four years in the making. We've had a prototype been running our business on the prototype now for over two years uh, but we've just we uh, spent the last 18 months with a proper full stack uh, engineer he's joined the team as a co-founder and uh, he has been very busy working hard and first of July we just launched that nice soft launch it's a beta at the moment a private beta but people are joining it and getting superb feedback which is great um, oh, yeah. And not to miss, we have just purchased another SA managing agency. Um, and those guys have got units in Lake District, Cornwall, uh, Cardiff, Sheffield, Cotswolds. So, um, yeah, altogether, I'm, I've now got a lot of people uh, that um, that I work with and um, fantastic teams. And that's how I, I managed to do it is I, I'm a, I, I describe myself as a, a team builder. You know, I, I, I lead from the back and I give give people what they need to succeed. So. Yeah, there we go. Brilliant. And that's just really to confirm that, you know, I've done a handful of service accommodations myself, but Graham is the guru when it comes to this business. You know, he's gone from grassroots to build it to that. So we just wanted to share that with you all so that you know that you're in safe hands. So one of the things that we'll all agree on massively is you have to have a winning mindset. And we do believe that that is the key that can unlock uh, any, any, anything that you're trying to achieve, whether it's in property business or in life, a winning mindset must be developed. It, you don't always get that overnight, and this is essential to your success. So what's a winning, winning mindset? Well, you need to first imagine yourself achieving your goals. So I always say set out with a vision, 
So for argument's sake, if you are looking to set up a serviced accommodation business, I would say in the first 12 months, how many units do you want? How do you want to get the units? Are you looking at doing rent to rent management, buying the properties, converting them, have a vision and then set your goals? Because without that sort of thing, you've got the roadmap, you've got no way of getting to the destination that you want. And of course, when you start to lose your way, ways at different times and things become hard, if you know your vision and your goals, you can revert back to them. You can study them again and of course you can push yourself forward to do this you need to take time to define exactly what it is that you want and that will change over time as well so don't give yourself a hard time but then all the steps that you need to take will be in that vision you must start with you and your attitude toward things and remember success will come with challenges and that's why starting with the end in mind will help you stay focused, overcome the challenges and help you move towards the successes because it is far too easy to see all the reasons why something might not work and then that is when basically people will give up and then that's when they fail. So you need to be making sure that you learn to have that winning mindset to say basically no problems, only solutions. We do have the problems, but if we can solve the problems, if we can get out there, it won't drag you down, then normally we can find solutions. And what I do find is sometimes the solutions that you find to problems, other people are having. So potentially if you can systemize it, you can monetize it, you can actually make a revenue stream out of helping others to get rid of the problems that they've already having. You got anything to add to the winning mindset, Graham? Yeah, well, just there's two. I think it's very common these days. People just try and avoid problems, and uh, and that's understandable, right? You know, we none of us want problems. We don't want to invite problems into our lives. I mean, we, we first of all we try and we we use different language with ourselves. We've got challenges, right? But um, you, I think it's important to realise if you want to achieve anything that's of value, you've got to overcome challenges if there wasn't challenges there wouldn't be value on the other side of it you know so it's, it's almost switching the mindset to embrace challenges and to realize yeah you've got you are going to have to push through things and so having the right mindset knowing where you're going someone responded to one of my posts the other day i was saying you know you can't procrastinate you've got to just take action you've just got to pull the trigger and someone's responded saying well you know i do struggle with this right now you know got any, any tips and it's like well yeah, you need to clearly define where you're going. First of all, what is it you're trying to do? If you know where, if you know where the treasure is on the on the treasure map, you know where X marks the spot. You know where you're going. You're just going to keep trying different routes until you get there. So if you don't know where you're going, first of all, it's going to be very very difficult uh, to make decisions. But then, what I like to do because I used to be uh, the world's biggest procrastinator. I'm, I'm not so sure now. Uh, so I'm not I'm not going to be a comedian, though. I um. So yeah, look, I think being being a procrastinator i genuinely used to spend months researching things research 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 and even after i made a decision i'd spend three more months second guessing whether i made the right decision you can't be in business you can't run a business like that so i think when you know where you're going you know where x is on the map you almost need to imagine yourself there having achieved it and looking back at the situation you're in now and it becomes very clear, very obvious what decisions you need to make, what action you need to take. Um, and yeah, it is th these mindset tips and tricks are absolutely essential. It's why we start out talking about it. And um, and for people that struggle with this kind of thing, I just I would say it's, a, it's like a muscle, right? It's, you're going to you're going to get there through practice. Just start flexing it, start trying and it will, it will become second nature. I can't imagine doing what I'm doing and facing the overcoming the challenges that I have on a daily basis now. Uh, without having the right mindset in place. Brilliant. Brilliant. So the next thing then is to discover your area. So as with any strategy, what you're looking to achieve. Now, of course, you can you can do pretty much service accommodation will work anywhere in the UK. You don't necessarily need to be in the big cities or anything like that. It depends on the clientele and what you're putting uh, or what sort of business that you want to be running. There's a lot of different market types and they all work in different areas. So it's whether it's holiday cottages, whether you want to be, you know, in the city center, have those sort of pads, whether you want to work with contractor or have contractor houses, each has its own place and needs and can be weighed up against the property types that you're finding in your areas as well. A lot of people just assume that it's holiday makers if you're by the sea and the coast and stuff, but still getting contractors in place can actually give you higher occupancies and things during the course of a year than potentially if you're just letting it 
it to holiday makers all the time and things. Uh, you need to do proper competitor analysis to help uh, and define exactly where you want to look and whether you're coming up with a winning formula. And of course, checking out Airbnb, Booking.com, AirDNA, things like that can really help you gather the information and the nightly rates. What would you say to that, Graham? Yeah, it's essential. I, a lot of people, especially at the start, really potentially get too concerned with uh, does does one area work against another? Um, it, it's quite simple. It's like, what's your next best alternative with a, a particular property you're looking at? SA really can work absolutely anywhere and everywhere, but it's it, does it stack, you know, and does it stack against, does it beat the next best alternative that you've got with that particular property? Um, if you want a fail safe way of knowing whether an area works, just see if there's any hotels um, and especially areas that have got new hotels because they don't they don't throw up hotels uh, willy nilly. They do a lot of this proper research uh, for you. So if there's a new hotel that's going up in an area, you know, there's a market. Yeah. And I think also if you look at your areas and there's, there's plenty of people doing serviced accommodation, then there's demand because, you know, a lot of people will have gone out of business if they're not getting any customers through the door, so to speak. And I, I've, people have said to me in the past, well, there's so much competition. What do I do? I say, you work with the competition. You know, that's one of the things that we look at is to say that maybe you've got a few units and you've got somebody booking or wanting to book your units. You can't accommodate them. Then you want to have people in your area that you can work to, to see if you can, you know, take a little bit of the percentage of the money, but pass the booking over to them as well and ask them if they'll do the same for you. So there's, there's loads of different ways to do it in your areas. Don't ever be put off. As we say, it's just about making sure you've done the right analysis, that you're looking for the right sort of uh, clientele to go into your properties and you're looking at the right sort of properties for those people as well. Brilliant. So setting yourself up for success, which is what we always want to make sure that we're doing. This is about the compliances of your properties. If you set the bar high from day one, then you're already ahead of the legislation changes that are coming this year. I've already seen there's a question about that and we'll touch on that later on. Uh, by thinking ahead and, and leading the best practices, you need to make fewer changes to your business as it grows. So there's certain things that you want to be looking out for. Some people uh, even have multiple companies if needed to separate operating SA and managing SA. So there are different ways, and we're going to go through the four different fundamental ways, there's more than that, but the four fundamental ways that you can do serviced accommodation, because a lot of people get caught up just thinking there's only a couple of ways to do this. Again, there's often more tax benefits to keeping things separate. So you have to check these things out as you're setting your units up. And furthermore, you'll need to make sure if nothing else, as you're starting out, that you're um, registered with the ICO. So you're allowed to handle guests information and an ID at check-in. But it's probably better to get yourself a domain, uh, get it set up proper email address so that you're not looking like the amateurs who may be a dot com or a hotmail. And of course, get yourself a landing page for your business as well so that uh, landlords or potential partners or even guests can find you online. What would you add to that, Graham? Yeah, absolutely. You want to you want to start with the end in mind. If you're planning on be becoming a professional business, then start out as a professional business. Um, you know, you're not going to do it later. And in fact, it's going to slow you down. You might not even get to later if you do go out um, handing out um, your, your mobile number and a, and a hotmail address. So, you know, domains are quite cheap to get. Setting up a landing page, pretty easy. You know, there's plenty of uh, people that would offer help on that kind of thing on, on websites such as Fiverr and People Per Hour. So it's not hard. Um, and then, yeah, with regards to regulation, legislation, all of that, just there's no flying under the radar. It just go... go but again, like act as a professional would and, and do do everything properly. Yeah. I mean, if you're managing properties on somebody else's behalf, then it's up to you to make sure that they are allowed to do so. It's also up to them to make sure. But of course, if you're looking at doing potentially a rent to rent, a rent to SA deal, then it's looking at leases. If you're looking at apartments and things, you're looking at maybe even ask them what their mortgage terms are, whether they're allowed to do short term rentals, because by being up front, you'll put yourself in a good position and you do not want to spend any money on somebody else's properties or even your own property for that matter to only be told later on, you cannot do this to maybe even void a mortgage uh, for the mortgage companies to say, right, we want, uh, we want the loan back or anything like that. So cut out all the headaches, ask the questions up front. And if you get the answer that you don't want, 
There's always opportunities to be able to talk to mortgage companies, to change maybe the terms, to maybe look at different ways of doing things. And of course, not every property will work. So don't try and fit you know, a square peg in a round hole or anything like that. Make sure that you set yourself up for success and then you can sleep well at night. You know your business is, is almost bulletproof. And of course, when the legislations come in and the government finally say that they're going to have you know, maybe an Article 4 in place, which we've already got for HMOs, but maybe they'll bring that in in certain areas. Uh, or they're bringing some sort of license in or some sort of register, I would have said it's probably going to come in for serviced accommodation, along with the planning use, which could be now a C5 is what they're talking about. We will be in a good position to be able to maybe potentially get the grandfather rights on this if we're already set up, we're already compliant, and we're not trying to hide that away from anybody else. And of course, with a, a business the size of yours, Graham, you know, that's the sort of things that you're making sure are in place, aren't you? Yeah, absolutely. We're getting ahead of it. Um, I think the other thing to just mention is business rates. You know, technically you should be moving over to business rates and away from council tax. Um, and this might be the way that the councils just grandfather people in if they do decide to do that. Um, certainly in COVID, when they were offering out grants for hospitality providers, it was, um, it was anyone that was on business rates got it automatically. And if you weren't, uh, you were out of luck. So... Yeah, that's certainly how they officially recognise you as being um, a hospitality provider. And, right. and, and the other thing, just, just to add on that, I think there is a lot of um, people unnerved by it. They're thinking, right, well, there's not enough housing stock and the councils are finally going to put a stop to it all. Um, councils are also well aware. I mean, we've got, we work with a department in Nottingham, um, you know, part, part of their tourism. Uh, they realise how much like, economic trade like uh, is brought in through tourism so i don't think it's necessarily all bad news um, but um it does completely make sense that they want to get control uh, they can't manage what they don't measure at the moment they've got no idea how many service departments are really out there because there's no register so it's um it's something that we've been expecting for a long time and it should it should increase the quality of uh, companies and offerings out there stop stop people playing at it so it's probably mostly good news yeah, ah, well, it normally is, you know, it's normally trying to get rid of the bad ones. Unfortunately, the bad ones are still trying to be under the radar anyway. So sometimes we get penalised for um, for obviously, you know, uh, doing the job properly. And then we have to pay for licensing and things like that. But let's worry about that as it comes in right here, right now. We can still go about a business, but we're just saying, make sure you set yourself up for success. You know what you're doing. If you know what you're doing, it's so much easier. So the fundamental four ways to do service accommodation deals, and there are more, I should add a, a fifth one to this, which is buying the business, um, is, is uh, obviously an owner or a landlord yourself. You can convert your own properties into service accommodation units if you've got buy-to-lets. Obviously, again, check with your mortgage providers if you have mortgages on those. We have the rent-to-rent, rent-to-SA, which is the big buzzword. And a lot of people, when they're starting out doing service accommodation, think it has to be rent-to-rent. -rent. Nobody else will do anything else on that. But um, we, you can also do joint ventures with landlords and property owners. So you could do it in, or structure it in such a manner. And this is quite good if you've got blocks of flats or they own a big building where you can go in and say, well, they provide the property. So after the mortgage, if they've got a mortgage and the bills have been paid and obviously a, a fee for us managing it, we'll split the profits 50-50. You can do that any which way you choose. And of course, management, which is taking a percentage each month. A lot of people overlook the management side of things, but if you're charging between 18, potentially 22% each month on the profits, then you can very quickly scale a serviced accommodation business. Our students actually have been doing this and they are absolutely flying through. Where they were starting with the rent to rent because that's all they thought they could do. They come on now, they picked up how to do the management opportunity on it. And of course, you've already got those systems in place and you can earn between 750, 1500 pounds a month just by managing somebody else's profit. And you haven't actually got to spend any money out on that. Um, I'll just go through this one quickly. Uh, so you need to be a meeting landlord. You need to be talking to agents. There's a lot of you know, uh, agents out there at the moment that are concerned that landlords are going to be looking to sell their properties because interest rates have gone up and maybe their buy-to-lets aren't going to stack up anymore. You need to be you sending out marketing, marketing materials. materials. Uh, you need to make sure that you're looking professional and your marketing stands out from what everybody else is doing. 
Uh, once you find a, a prospective opportunity, you need to make sure that the deal stacks. So it's all about knowing your numbers. This is another thing that we really do help people that we work with with this is getting the numbers right, knowing that you're going to make money because as Gillian was saying as well, it's very easy to take on service accommodations and just think, I'll stick it on Airbnb and I'll go and sit on a beach. But there's things that you have to make sure that you're on top of. Uh, and we're going to cover that in a minute. Uh, too many people get into SA and don't know the true costs of things. And that's why we always say set yourself up from the word go as a business, profit and loss, know your cash flow, because uh, it'll help you in the long run. Got it giddy then. Uh, make sure you can actually stack the deals uh, because this is something that is vitally, vitally important. So when it comes to doing deals and the different ways you can do deals, I know that you've you've pretty much done all of those and more, Graham. What, uh, what top tips would you have? Um, I think, I think good selling. I mean, ultimately, you know, good selling is is good listening. It's understanding what what the uh, landlords or the operators are, are trying to. What what is their main concerns? Uh, what are they trying to solve? What are they trying to overcome? It's not always about return on investment. I mean, a lot of people are quite financially driven when it comes to their investments, of course, but that's certainly not uh, the only case. So, first of all, good listening, like and and. Yeah, what is their main concern with running it as short stay and how would you overcome that? Um, so the owner JV model, for example, that, you know, that works well for guys that just they absolutely don't want to lose money. No matter what, they need to get their bills covered. After that, they're quite happy to take a bit of risk. You know, uh, that's a nice halfway house. They get to benefit from uh, an essay that's doing really, really well versus a rental essay where they're just getting guaranteed rent. What What's the what's the benefit for them? So first of all, rather than trying to ram your agenda down someone else's throat, listening to the landlord, listening to the person you're trying to do business with, understanding, um, and then trying to find synergy, value alignment. Yeah, brilliant stuff. And we have a little top tip. Perception becomes reality. So by acting as a potential business partner, so going out there, speaking to people, but almost with a great offer, when you're meeting them, you'll soon find someone who is generally willing to work with you and give you an early chance. So if you are just starting out on this and maybe you're a little bit concerned, you know, I haven't got a track record or anything. When you go into the meetings and when you go and speak to people, go in there as if you're trying to be, you know, a business partner with them. Because fundamentally, if you're looking or controlling their property, that's what you are anyway. So you're not looking, you know, with the begging bowl or anything like that. You're going in there. You've got a great service to offer um, and they just need to know about that service. And of course, if nobody knows about you, nobody can flow to you. So you need to make sure that you're getting out there. But go with confidence when it comes to that. And of course, negotiation skills are a massive one. Learning to act as a professional until you become a professional is essential. Um, how, how would you expect a professional to turn up to a meeting? That's exactly how you need to be doing it. So if you need to dress a little bit smarter for those first impressions, then make sure that you do, because first impressions, whilst we shouldn't judge a book by its cover, hey, we all do at the end of the day. And, and that's not right. At the end of the day, you should get to know people and stuff. We all know this, but we don't. If you turn up to me and you're not looking that presentable, I have no way in the world I'm going to work with you or give you my property or anything like that. You're just not going to hand the keys over. Now, you might have to get to know that person, but why already put that barrier up? Be smart, be early, okay? Time is massive. You can't turn up and say, oh, the train was late or the car did this or traffic was bad. Make sure you're going to arrive there early. Make sure that you're, 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 you're ready, you, your head's in the right place uh, and try not to be flustered or in a rush because, you know, everybody's out there, everybody's busy and it can be um, a tricky time and a worrying time when you're turning up to these places and doing these viewings and meeting these people. Because this might mean that you agree to do something as well that you shouldn't or cave into pressure and maybe the numbers aren't going to be quite as good as you wanted them to be. You should never go and start negotiating numbers on the first meeting. You should always give yourself that time to be able to go away and just say, listen, I'll get back to you within 24 hours or 48 hours. Just make sure that you are going back to them in that time. That's perfectly understandable. Never feel pressured into negotiating numbers then and there if you're not sure of anything. Just say, I just need to speak to somebody else in the business who deals with that. Uh, and if this is a worry for you, then obviously reach out to people who can help and support you in moving yourself forward. Approaching meetings with the right attitude and information will help you achieve great results. And of course, negotiations and getting deals over the line is a bit of an art. 
that at the end of the day, just the more people you meet, the more people you speak to, the more it will flow, the more you'll have confidence in what you're saying and the better you will become. It really is a step-by-step -step process that means when done correctly, you, will, you can and you will and you want to be making it a win-win. Would you agree, Graham? Yeah, that's yeah, absolutely. That's what good business is. It's about creating the win-wins. Uh, that's what I mean about getting that value alignment with people listening first. Um, you know, on the first impression thing, yeah, that's absolutely right. You get one chance to make a first impression, and it really does count. I think there's been now um, more than one study that's proven people make decisions about people within the first second or something like that. So how you greet someone is really important. You know, having that right handshake. Greeting someone like an old friend really helps. You're kind of almost communicating to their subconscious that, you know, you are a friend. Um, and and ultimately, yeah, I mean, business becomes a bit of an afterthought. If you are genuinely interested in a person and you and you want to, you know, build rapport, um, then, yeah, that that's, that's the best way to be doing business, really, is you build that connection first. You look for similarities. You look for anything, really, that you guys have got in common. Uh, focus on that. Um, and we try and have more than one meeting as well. Uh, as Mark said, though, you know, don't try not to get too dug it, like stuck in the numbers. Some people just come straight out the gate. You know, what do you charge? Um, and, and if you go straight out with your your fees, then that's all, that's pretty much all they're thinking about after that and how to negotiate you down rather than uh, having had chance for you to explain what value you're bringing to the table and why, even if you are more expensive, you're worth it. Um, and so that's why you don't want to be going straight out with numbers and, and just delay and, and back that off. So, yeah, and, and like Mark says, it's a, it is an art and you'll get um, it, it get practice. Actually, we've had a question, you know, and I know we're going to be coming to questions and answers, but it is very relevant. Like how, what techniques can you do and use to convince landlords? It's just it's, it's a numbers game. Ultimately, we've got some uh, it, it, we've got students that take more action than other students and they're the ones that are getting more units. And, um, you know, it is it really is just a numbers game. Get out there, speak to more people, get better at it, start networking more, tell more people what it is you're doing and what you want to do. Um, and at some point, uh, you'll be telling your story of how you got your first units and someone else will be saying, well, that was lucky. Um, and uh, I, I'm a big believer in uh, that. Yeah, luck is just preparation, meeting, opportunity. Yeah, no, brilliant. It's a good question as well. And it's it's when we get, like I say, we hear all the time, myself and Graham, and it, it really does boil down to the fact that if you've got confidence in what you can offer, in how you can help people, uh, in how you're going to do a good job looking after potentially their property and their asset, and you're going to maintain it to a better standard than they would if they were giving it to somebody for 12 months and a buy to let, because obviously you need to keep the guests coming in and things. Not everybody wants to know, but then not everybody always wants to know when you first start talking to people. I have had myself more deals come through on the follow up than they have on the first meeting. So you've got to make sure that you put a good follow up system together. Keep following up with people until somebody actually generally says to you, stop calling me or stop sending me this or, or and then just respect it. I would still follow up in six months time now anyway, because you just don't know. But in a nice manner, you've got to do it in a nice manner. And all you're doing it in any follow up is just to say, we spoke before. You weren't interested in our services. I just wondered if there was anything I could help you with now. We are here to help. We look to help landlords. We look to help investors. That is what we do. Have you got anything that you need help with now nobody's ever going to have a go at you for saying something like that to them they're going to say no i'm all good leave me alone and that's probably about the worst it will be but it is a numbers game as we said earlier on and you will get more no's than you will get yeses that is for sure you've just got to keep going until you find the right people that want to work with you yeah and once you get that first one you know uh we talk about selling without selling you know people don't like being sold directly to so the first one's always the hardest but once you've got that and you've proven that you can do it um you just talk about your client success and what you're achieving for other people and people want a bit of that action so it, it definitely gets easier it's just a numbers game to get that first one yeah definitely definitely and what we're trying to do here as well is just show you the sort of the roadmap if you like of the, the steps that you need to take. I always think of my property investing businesses or my journey as a step ladder. And we all start at the bottom run. So we've got to start working our way up. And sometimes you can slip down a bit, but it's a lot easier as well. If somebody can give you a leg up or a push up the backside or something like that, push you up a few of those ladders, uh, a few of those runners to help you get there. And of course, that's what we're fundamentally trying to do here is to just open your mind up to it because it's very easy for our mind to 
play tricks on us, which is why mindset is key and say the negatives. You know, I've spoke to three people. None of them wanted to know. Well, you, that means you need to speak to another three because potentially one of those will want to know. So I always look at uh, things like that to say that I don't have to do this. I don't have to do anything that I currently do. But you know what? I always say to myself, even if people are being negative, I get to do this. I get to be in front of people. I get to speak to people. So if we can change that negativity in our own mindset, then it's a lot easier for us to, to put that across to people that we're speaking to. So let's talk about now setting up your SA unit. So you've managed to get out there. You've, you've negotiated your deals and you've done very, very well. And you've now got your units. So it's all about making sure that it's set up and it's ready to succeed. And you want this to work for you, in the, of course, in the background. Look at what it takes uh, to get maximum revenue and maximum occupancies in your area. What are, you, what are people achieving? What are they doing? What is really, really working there? Often zip and link bags are preferred as it keeps options open and means a single room can be used by two unrelated people. So don't just always think about sticking double beds and things like that in. This works especially well for contractor accommodation where you're essentially charging per person per night. Uh, and you can acquire the furniture either by purchase or by finance. You can lease it, of course. There's also companies that will hire you furniture on a monthly basis. So you haven't always got to have that big outlay. People say to me, I need eight grand to do this essay. You, you don't. You're just not talking to the right people. You need to make sure that you put yourself out there uh, and you go for the right leasing companies because there are property leasing companies that will let you buy the furniture. Then they'll give you the money back and you pay them a monthly fee out of your profits. There are even companies that will, will provide you full furniture supply, staging and even clear up after that day. And of course, you know, speaking from experience and, and of course, Graham will as well. It is so, 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 so worth to pay that bit extra and not be running around with flat pack furniture yourself. What do you uh, think on this one, Graham? Yeah, I think, look, I'll be honest, we used to think we were, we were being clever by saving some money and doing it ourselves. But um it's a, an absolute nightmare um so <laughs> um and when you factor in the time delay if you think the average average property around here maybe is 100 pounds per night um and you can phone a staging company to come do it, do it all in a day you know you're not going to get all of your trips to ikea and wait for deliveries from wayfair and everywhere else and then get your handyman in to assemble the flat pack furniture and then take away all the cardboard and then the cleaners. You know, actually there's a lot of work involved. And when you really factor in all of the costs, um, staging companies are a no brainer. So yeah, we pretty much all of our units now are done by staging companies. Uh, Gilliam says everybody needs to be running around with flat pack furniture once. Well, do it for your own house, but don't do it for, you know, your assets or your business that's going to be making you money. But he is right. You've got to get your hands dirty at least once, I guess. Uh, but it's not the best use of our times. So I've got a Graham's top tip here. He didn't know I was going to put this in. You also need to remember that everything needs to be easily replaced. This is not the place for bespoken furniture and any items that will be hard to replace quickly. You want stylish, easy to clean and hard wearing products because it's the nature of the business that things will get broken no matter how much, um, you know, we, we hope they don't. They are going to happen. People are people. And you want to have a selection of spares on hand for quick replacements. So this is one of the things that you need to make sure that if you're buying stuff at a discount like crockery, it might be money saving in the short term. But once it breaks or it's discontinued, suddenly you start to look less professional with mismatched crockery or having to replace the whole lot by replacing uh, and being practical, keep the items so that they are pretty mainstream and they can still look nice. Um, but uh, you need to make sure that they're up to a professional photography as well. So you need to make sure that when you're getting your photos taken, you're not just wandering around with your, with your iPhone or anything. You know, spend once and it will make you money in the long run. And that's really what you want to be thinking is if I invest into professional photography, at least that's one thing we haven't got to worry about later. I see a lot of people saying to themselves, well, I'll tell you what, I'll take a few pictures myself just to get them on there and then I'll get the professional photography done later and it doesn't always work well like that and then sometimes your um units don't perform the way that you'd want it anyway so then you start to struggle and you can't afford to do the professional photography why because you're forking out each month to keep your unit going so remember your photos are your shop display to the world and as good as you might think you are with the latest phones the professionals are so much better this will help you shine above the competitions and attract more guests 
Anything to add there, Graham? No, you've nailed it, mate. <laughs> nailed it. I like it. Like it. So, Graham's top tips. We've got another one. You're doing well here, Graham. Uh, it's much better to get this right from the start. Always think, is it scalable? And I do like that when I have my discussions with him. He's always like, so can you can you scale this? You know, can, can you can the process work for 10 units, 20 units, 50 units, 100 units? Whether you want to get that big or not is up to you. But if you systemize it, and that's what we try and do in our businesses, is to systemize things as much as possible so they can remove us from the businesses and we can get on with the things that we enjoy. So you have to make sure that you know how to manage your properties, your units. You can, of course, get a management company in to do it yourself. But I would say that you're leaving money on the table if you do that. It's really not that hard to get it systemized yourself and have a small team sort these things out for you. So once you're operational, one of the first things you need is, to, is a decent channel manager. These online apps uh, really help you to automate your business, set your rates, sync your calendars, and of course, send messages to guests. This is a massive module that we have in our training because it is something that once you've got it systemized, you just cookie cutter it to all of your properties. Uh, not only will you need to send guest emails, SMSs, uh, WhatsApp messages, but you should set up or you should set it all up in a way that's easy to delegate these tasks to a team member. It's much better to get this right from the word go. Um, and of course, things to consider are how people will be paying you, uh, how they're gonna sign their terms and conditions and things, how they're gonna provide you ID, uh, confirming guest phone numbers and things like that. Uh, there's also fire safety measures, bed layout choices, and other requests to make sure that we manage. Of course, securing deposits, the management around sending access details for the properties themselves. And what we also say is after each guest stays, you'll need to arrange housekeeping and, of course, bed linen changes. And this may all sound like a lot, but that is why you need a decent process as this is all essential and you have to get these things right. You know, running a successful serviced accommodation business is about offering a VIP service. When we say serviced accommodation, it is the service part is your business. That wants to be your mantra, if nothing else, is uh, am I offering a top service? You want to make sure that you build a business that's not there to enslave you. You don't want to be running around doing the cleaning, changing beds, worrying about things like that. You may do a bit of that in the beginning, and that's fine. As, as Gilliam says, you know, every now and again, we have to do something that we don't want to be doing, but we want to be getting the systems in there as quickly as possible. And that's, again, something that we like to help people with. So if you are struggling with anything like that, then, of course, reach out to us and we'll help point you in the right direction. If you've already started doing service accommodation, then you may or may not be managing all of this as well as you could be. And when it comes to the management of, of the uh, units and everything, Graham, you know, what would your top tips be there? Well, this is exactly what guest flow is for, ultimately. <laughs> um, shameless plug there. But yeah, look, this is, this is where all of the noise is. This is the biggest team in the business. Um, and it's... Um, yeah, it does get very, very noisy um, with guests arriving at all times of day and night, needing needing questions answered. Um, and all of these, it's, it's a logistical challenge. You might have one guest that booked six months ago that's done steps one, two and three and you're waiting for. You've got another guest that's just booked five minutes ago arriving tonight as well. Um, and working out your prioritization across everything We've got yeah. someone with their mic off, I think. <laughs> um, working out prioritization across everything you're doing, um, not missing anything, but also when you start adding multiple team members, making sure no one's duplicating the work and you're not having um, like different responses being sent to the same guest, it becomes a, a definite challenge. And I've seen so many people burn out from this and they get to the point where they never want to speak to a guest again. They don't ever want to speak to another housekeeper because it just it, it just gets quite frustrating. So you need decent processes, decent systems, and, uh, and ultimately a decent platform to operate it all from, from uh, on one platform. And, and, and the solution that people have uh, prior to guest flow is just lots of different apps, huge number of apps. And then the problem with that is it makes training people very difficult retaining people very difficult because of the complexity or you're doing it all yourself and driving yourself potty 24 7 and 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 the thing is with service accommodation to bear in mind is it's busiest when you 
when you least want it evenings weekends and summer holidays that's the, that is our peak times right so that's why you need a team and then you need a good way of delegating and if it, i don't know if it, it, there's probably some people in here that's somewhat familiar with service accommodation we use a, a system called a channel manager you know all the channel managers are much of a muchness uh, they sync rates they sync availability they've got some basic automations but none of them really solve these problems that i'm talking about how do you communicate amongst your team how do you delegate tasks and make sure nothing's being missed um, so that's that. That is the challenge that we've been solving. Brilliant. Good stuff. Good stuff. Moving on. Building an SA business is all about hiring staff and suppliers that you need. Housekeeping is probably one of the first areas to get assistance with. It's time consuming and not a great use of anybody's time beyond the first few times. Whilst um, you can work this out, you know, it, what it involves, you will find companies in your area that can sort this out for you. This means you'll be able to pass on very clear instructions and expectations to any cleaning teams that you have. At this time, you should also start to look at hire a VA. OK, a lot of people try and hold this off for a long time, but it is such a cost effective thing to be doing in your business that you need to be looking at it and having the processes in place to be able to hand them over. This is so you can almost fully automate your business from the get-go. And it's a lot easier to do early on than it is later on. Because, um, you know, as getting it right can be liberating and free up your time, allowing you to take the business to the next level. This is where we see a lot of people getting caught in the weeds. And it's all about the increasing your value and your time management as you're moving forward. However, getting this wrong can set you back many months and be very costly. And, of course, slow down any opportunities that you have to make good profits. And this can undo all your hard work. And of course, your reputation might suffer from that as well. Um, and then it's all about ensuring they deliver and stay happy. You want happy guests because uh, and a happy and winning team as well. So people do need to buy into your vision, so to speak. And they also need to have a bit of an eye for detail when you're actually looking at getting cleaning firms. I've gone through a few cleaning firms just because people just haven't got that eye for detail. Obviously, we're more passionate about it than they are a lot of the time, but you can still make it a win-win for everybody. And if you want to scale a service accommodation business up and be very profitable, then this is something that is vital. Um, we're going to move into revenue management now, as this is key and it's, a, it's the life and blood of your business. This is the last part of the business that you will delegate if you ever truly do delegate it. Uh, and this gets overlooked massively. Um, it, uh, you know, we, we found it ourselves uh, and something that uh, Graham was very, very strong. And he helped me with this as well, uh, just by listening to him, just by learning from him as well. And we've even had students that were struggling with their revenue management. They came on to a a group coaching call with us and within 10 hours after the call they made 1800 quid just by getting this right you see you nearly read to, you really do need to keep on top of your nightly rates and not just think it's a set and forget thing it and hmos you can set and forget you know uh buy to let you can pretty much set and forget service accommodation is a different beast when it comes to that and we call this obviously revenue management it's one of the most important things to get right cool 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 uh, having advanced controls over your booking rules, discounts for longer stays, correct cleaning fees and per stay basis. These are the things that you want to be looking at to encourage longer stays, as this is essential as well for maximum profits. This area is always overlooked when training, uh, when, well, and I've seen training in service accommodation. You know, it's something that's never really talked about because it's not all of the glamour, uh, but this is what makes you profitable or not. What would you say? I know you're a big one with this, Graham. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing to see how many people leave a lot of money on the table. And actually, um, I recently benefited from it. I'm going to Tony Robbins this week in Birmingham and the hotels near the NEC, they're going for crazy money. Um, so hopped on Airbnb, you know, set the search radius within um, 15 minutes and found someone that had done exactly that. They just had a standard rate. They, they clearly had set the same rate for every night throughout the year. Um, a weekend rate and a, and a weeknight rate. Um, and I think it, we, we got an absolute bargain. It was a two bedroom place. So, um, yeah, we've saved we've probably saved about two grand. Uh, and that just goes to show on a four night booking how much money people are leaving on the table uh, by not getting this right. So it's about looking at your competitors. There's, there's software out there that will automate a lot of it for you. But even then, it's still not set and forget. I think using some automation software, which will monitor your, um, your competitors and, and allow you to put some advanced rules in, will probably put you in the top 50th percentile of, 
of operators because there are so many people that set and forget. But even then, um, you can't leave it. You need to be proactively managing all of your voids and um, and make making sure you're very strategically placed in the market. Um, yeah. and, and and honestly, the more hours you put into it, the more results you get every single time. We've got we, where we are in our business now. We've got someone who's like is UK based a data analyst, and he's full time on revenue management. Just put in perspective the importance of it. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Like you said, there so many people fall over here. Um, you know, you need to have a picture here to help you. Um, and of course, it's all about people getting sold a dream uh, when they say service accommodation and the profits that you can make in there. And of course, if you do not get your revenue management nailed and know your targets in your area, then it can be very, very, very tricky to make sure that you're getting the bookings in there. So, um, as I say, people are told that they can just get hold of a property, put it on the likes of Airbnb, Booking.com, sit back and watch the money. I wish all day long. Uh, and then reality sets in a lot of the time. Uh, they're not getting the bookings that they're anticipated. They're not getting the rates. They're losing money. And of course, it can very quickly spiral out of control. People end up feeling trapped. We don't like that. We've had people come to us because of this. They're feeling lost. They're feeling confused. And they're wondering why it works for others and not for them. And it's just a simple thing, realistically, of getting a few systems in place and getting that revenue management working. It's not them that's got it wrong, actually. It's just the fact that nobody has shown them the proper way of doing things. And this is why I go and get my information from the experts, i.e. like Graham and things like that, because why wouldn't you? At the end of the day, you know, somebody that's been there, done it, who's still around, who survived recession, survived COVID, that's thriving, is somebody that I want to make sure that I'm following. So that's what we try and help people with. And it's like I say, it's nobody else's fault. You don't know what you don't know. So it's all about keeping momentum when you're doing these sorts of things. If you're interested in service accommodation and moving yourself forward. So you have a deal, you've started to build the business and the life that you desire. Now, what do you want to do? In most cases, training and support offered out there only gets you this far. Well, it doesn't even get you this far in a lot of things. I think some of the things that we've shared with you, uh, it says tonight there, because I'm used to doing these sort of things at nighttime. Uh, it's just the tip of the iceberg. And of course, for setting up a building and growing a successful serviced accommodation business, you have to make sure that uh, you are setting yourself up for success. And I hope that we've helped you a little bit here. We are going to answer questions as well. And if you've got any overwhelm or anything like that, then of course, we'll answer any questions that you've got here. Because obviously people have always got um, negative sort of thoughts or worries, should I say, not negative. They've just got worries or concerns with everything that's going on and stuff. So it is our opportunity to be able to help and support you. Um, obviously, there's only so much that we can do in this hour session. So um, we have got a little uh, offer, which uh, is, uh, well, I think is actually a no-brainer, but that's just me. I'll tell you what, you can tell me what you think in a second. Um, but let me just ask you a little question. If you, if you were ready to start your service accommodation business and get out there, do you think that you've got all the tools to be able to do so? Or would you still be a little bit confused and worried about making mistakes and getting things wrong? Um, you know, feeling free uh, to put in the chat box if you think you would. Uh, or, of course, no, you, if you already know what you're doing and you're going to get stuck in, that's great. Uh, but for us moving forward, let me just skip here. We'll be having a live Q&A session in just a minute. So if you do have questions, please start putting them in the chat box because we're going to go through as many as we can. But while you do that, I'm just going to share with you uh, a day, a workshop that we are running where people can come in and learn all about setting up and building a serviced accommodation business. Uh, Gilliam's been very kind for us to be able to bring this to you. This is going to be a smallish workshop. It's going to be done online and it's going to be my, uh, my community. Obviously, we wanted to put this out to Gilliam's community as well for people that... Uh, um, want to take a service accommodation for the next level or just find out more. So if you need to help, you want to learn more about starting and scaling a service accommodation business, then we're here to help you. Uh, we would like you to join us for a full day's training at a no brainer investment to you. No more wishing you knew what to do. No more wondering how to get started and no more worrying about setup costs and losing money. No more, wonder, there's a lot of no mores here. No more wondering if you, uh, if it will work in your area and having the confidence to make the decisions so this is what we are going to do. Uh, we have a number of places available. Um, oh, it is limited because we are keeping it to a smallish group. But you can join us for an exclusive serviced accommodation workshop. This will run from 9 a.m. till 5 p.m. Don't worry, we will have breaks. So you'll be able to go to the toilet and things. 
Uh, we wanted to personally invite you to join us on this exciting opportunity as someone who is a member of the Property Filter community. We like to give back to communities and help people go out there and succeed. So if you're interested in an essay or have already started, this is great for you. This workshop is tailor made for you. It's designed to provide you with the knowledge, strategies and tools to succeed in a rapidly growing sector. The date is the 5th of August. The time, as I said, is 9 a.m. till 5 p.m. with regular breaks. The location will be on Zoom. Uh, and during this uh, day, you will immerse yourself in a workshop, gain valuable insights into how to research and choose a su suitable location by conducting market research to identify areas with high demand for service accommodation, develop a business plan, outline your goals, targets, your marketing strategies and pricing structures. You will be able to look at how you can financially secure your deals, determine the startup costs, create a budget to secure your necessary funds for the property acquisitions, or if you're going to do rent to rent or management, we're going to talk through how you can acquire suitable properties uh, that meet the needs and the preferences of your target market. So you can consider your factors such as size, location, and potential to expand your business, set up well, help you set yourself up legally and operationally structured, register in your business, local registrations, and set up operational systems such as housekeeping, maintenance, and guest management software. We're going to go through how you can invest in high quality furnishing and um, provide you with comfortable, stylish furnishing, high speed internet modems, and the things that you really, really need to make sure your guests have the best experience. We're going to go through how to develop a strong online presence, create a professional website and optimize it for search engines, utilize online booking platforms, social media and advertising to reach potential guests by direct bookings, implement effective marketing strategies, uh, provide exceptional customer service. So train your staff to deliver top notch service is just like a prim's short state that is graham's company does do it and we will continuously be able to monitor and improve your business well we won't you will be on a regular review your business performance and financials and get guest feedback to identify the areas for improvement and stay up to date with the latest market trends this amazing deal is for you and is provided with resources we are giving away a workbook so you will get a workbook of the day that you take away with you this is a downloadable workbook you can print it off if you like and we will also be sharing with you a service accommodation deal analyzer that you can use yourself we are going to share some case studies as well so we can break the deals down with you and you can practice with your deal deal analyzer at the same time to make sure that you know that your numbers are working so you will receive an essay deal analyzer a training workbook and we have some other resources that we will be sending out a few days before the workshop that you can fill in so we're ready to go when we start by the end of the workshop you will have a solid foundation to kickstart your property journey and your service accommodation venture so spaces for the workshop as i say are limited because we're keeping it to a smaller number so that we can communicate with you a bit more during the course of the day um, you can use the QR code. I'll put a link in the chat in a minute as well. But you're all probably saying to yourself, how much is this? Well, we've made it an absolute no brainer. This day's training will be made into a training um, product and will be sold for 997. But if you want to come and join us live for the event, you can for just $49.99 plus VAT. If you would like to sign up and get stuck in, then you can do. This will go out to my new to my list and everything uh, tomorrow and Thursday. And of course, once it's full, it's full. So if you're interested in this, you want to come and spend the day with myself and Graham. Uh, and we'll go through everything about service accommodation and give you a real taster for it, then this is for you. So look to register your place now. Uh, let me just scroll that down there. And if anybody's interested, as I say, the QR code's there. I'll stick a link in the chat and we'll, we'll go through now and do some Q&A. Uh, who's doing the Q&A? Uh, yeah, I, I will, uh, I will uh, go through the question. Thanks a lot, uh, Mark Graham. I think it was super, super valuable. Do you guys have got uh, a link for uh, your, your offer here, which I think is really good. Thanks a lot for putting that together for the Property Filter community. Uh, I learn a ton of stuff uh, in, an, uh, in an hour, so I, I'm guessing spending a day with you will be uh, quite valuable. And uh, thanks for making it a no-brainer price. And thanks a lot indeed for coming today. So uh, let's go up in the question. So Glenn is asking, and sorry guys, we, we will overrun, but I think it's well worth it. I think it was well valuable, so we'll just uh, crack on and continue. We are amongst friends and uh, I think it's really valuable. So let's uh, let's go on and continue. So Glenn's asking, 
uh, essay is a strategy that I'm considering, but I must ask what will be the issue with the new class uh, the government is bringing in and what is the solution? So I think you touched a little bit on that around class C5. And uh, are you uh, you sort of uh, uh, protect yourself uh, uh, in uh, setting it up as a legit uh, business so you get grandfather's rights? Can you can you uh, go back on this a little bit, Graham? Yeah, we don't know for sure yet. We're, we're making the assumption. But as I said, you know, at the moment, local authorities, the government, they don't really know exactly how many service departments there are uh, in the UK. So how can they really manage that situation? So we would hope initially just some, some level of register. Um, and that would then um, mean, I mean, if you look at how they started uh, legislating against uh, HMOs, initially it was... Um, anyone who had a HMO got the grandfather rights and got to come in. Now that, that said, it's not how they've approached it in Scotland. Um, and if you want to um, look at some worse, so, so, some kind of what worst case scenario might look like, uh, look at what they've been doing in Scotland and Wales. Um, it's not a deal breaker. There's still plenty of service departments and holiday uh, lettings. It's just they've, they've come in really hard in those areas. Um, so, um, yeah, I think it's like like I say, it's, pro it's probably to be welcomed. Like once there is regulations, at least we know where we all stand. Um, I think I've heard a few operators refer to this year as being a bit of a land grab. So um, uh, a lot of people are trying to expand and, and take on more units now before the regs come in, when it probably will become more difficult to convert uh, normal residential into service departments. So if it's something you're tempted to, uh, to do i think now is the time to do it i think you know like uh common sense might prevail at some in some way you know like i mean what they don't want is this, this single flat in the middle of a residential block you know or you know hosting parties and stuff you know so i think yeah. there's more risk in certain units you take on and a lot less in others so I think... yeah they probably will it will allow councils to start if 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 a, if a unit is being mismanaged i mean you know, if you if you're having parties in your in your units, you're definitely doing something wrong. We don't have parties. We've got zero tolerance um, policy for it because yeah, it's, it's one of the highest risk areas. Uh, upsets neighbours, upsets council. It just damages the property, upsets the landlord. So it's just you don't want parties, right? But if there is uh, a unit's being mismanaged, that's being used for parties all the time and upsetting neighbours. Uh, at the moment, council don't they don't really have a lot. Uh, they can do uh, and again with the new regs coming in it will allow them to hopefully put a stop to the nuisance makers um, and and generally increase the quality of uh, of the industry right and and that will in turn uh, make it even more popular i think certainly gen x um like they, they look on airbnb before they look anywhere else so it's very popular with the younger people but more and more people are considering service departments as an option when traveling um, instead of just looking at hotels now, and as as the as the standards increase, because uh, there's going to be less people playing at it and, and doing uh, an amateur job, quite honestly, um, then more people will have good experiences, and it will become their, their kind of preferred um, method of of staying away. Awesome, thank you. Uh, David's asking, how do I find clients? Should I wish to manage SA units as an alternative to taking my own rent to SAs? So, yeah, so yeah, I, management. Absolutely, yeah. So as Mark said, it's it's a numbers game. It really is. Um, a, oh, oh, sorry. Hang on. How did we? Um, so, so find the clients if you wish to manage. I mean, yeah, it, we, yeah. It's a numbers game. Talk talk to as many people as possible. Um, and if you've got your own, if you've already got something live, um, if you've got rent to SA and now you're looking to manage, that's the best way to do it. That's how I got got going. I had four units on rent to SA. Um, and we were like at 9.8 on booking.com. You know, we, we we were getting good reviews. We became known for what we did. And then speaking to other landlords and just saying, well, look, I'm achieving this here. Here's the numbers that we're achieving. It works. We know what we're doing. We've got housekeepers ready to go. We've got all the systems, processes. Do you want us to do it for you? Um, and yeah, a lot of landlords quite like that idea. Yeah, so it's really interesting what you say. So for you know, securing this deal, this negotiation, if you, it's not only portraying yourself professional it's actually having the infrastructure and the reality is most people don't have don't have that so it makes the it makes this number game you know uh, all but uh you know more difficult so yeah that's really really interesting uh fiona is asking uh the general view i get from people even uh some newly in rent to sa is that the market is saturated 
what are the key success factors to getting into the market, interior design, for example? Yeah, I hear it quite a bit. I think, look, having competition is not a bad thing. Like, if you've got no competitors, it's it's dangerous because, like, well, if you're looking at an area and there's no one operating, um, you've got a binary outcome. You're either going to absolutely smash it out of the park because you're going to be the only operator, or actually there's no one else doing it because there is no market, right? So having competitors and having having a thriving market or lots of operators isn't necessarily a bad thing. I have seen cities get drowned in SA units, and it just kind of kills it off for a couple of years before everyone changes their mind and goes back to residential. Um, that happened to Leicester a few years ago um, and it, it started off very lucrative. And then I think a few big landlords decided to try it out with about a hundred units each. And, um, and, and, you know, a city like Leicester doesn't necessarily have a huge tourism economy anyway. So it's not like saturation is, is um, to be completely ignored, but I would say it's not, too much of an issue if you think what an average medium-sized hotel has as bed spaces that probably represents my entire portfolio is like one medium-sized hotel and i'm across multiple cities across the uk Do you see what i mean i'm one of the larger operators so i really i, I wouldn't worry too much um, especially while the hotels are being booked up by the likes of the home office and you know so many hotels have been taken offline and absolutely full to the brim so um while ever there's this insatiable demand for overnight accommodation um, I don't think it's too much of an issue to worry about. Awesome. Uh, Wendy's asking, if we have rent to SA, can we apply for business rates or do we need to have, uh, do we need to own the property? Yeah, if you are doing rent to SA, you are the operator. So it should be you applying for business rates. So yeah, don't worry about um, whether or not you're an owner. You are the operator. So um, yeah, absolutely can move over. And if, you're, if it's your only unit in that entity, then you probably get small business rate relief if the rateable value is less than 12,000, which means you pay nothing at all. So that's uh, always a nice little bonus. Yeah, interesting. Uh, uh, Ozam is asking, uh, what is the best technique for uh, to convince landlord agent to give them uh, the time of the day to speak to you about corporate let? Uh, as soon as they know we want to do SA, they don't want to know. Okay, so that's uh, that's someone reaching out with letting agents and landlords and the reputation of uh, corporate lets running rent to SAs and the call calling <laughs> queue they must have all day long. How do you get past that? This is what we mean about a numbers game. I think networking, uh, building rapport, making business an afterthought. If you go straight in trying to trying to do business with people before actually listening, um, it's more difficult. So. Um, yeah, I, I think the guys that seem to be getting the best results are the ones networking, and that gives you an opportunity for people to get you get to know you on a personal level, know what you're about a little bit, um, and then uh, the fact that you're then doing SA becomes much more interesting to them. Mm -hmm. And then it's uh, coming in with small steps, showing the value, and then you can you've got things to talk about. Uh, yeah, I, I find it it's very uh, uh, like uh, unrewarding and really tough strategy to go and cold call the agents because they'll they'll just have policies in place and they it's really hard to get through so you're yeah. saying that uh, are there any uh, hooks or anything to get a conversation going on a cold call well uh, i think we... something else than taking on units you know like something of value we can provide as a, as a like product for prospect if you like you know like yeah we, we go into it in great depth actually because there's a lot there is a lot to it um i think one you know takeaway that that I can give here is, is just you want to escalate things as much as much as possible. So if you you know trying to do it over the phone is going to be always going to be a lot more difficult than doing it in person. Yeah. It yeah. It's much easier to say no to some voice on the phone than it is to a person who's being very professional, friendly in the office, speaking to the decision maker. So you want to find find out you want to make sure you're speaking to the right people first of all, and then try and speak to them in person. Awesome. Speak to the right people speak to them in person yeah that's really really helpful wendy they're asking about staging companies and there's a few thoughts shared and i think you mentioned your property furnished where is uh, this uh, james queen based he's in nutsford near manchester but he goes all over the uk very good service awesome fiona is asking can we access subscribe to guest flow uh without uh, becoming one of your essay students uh you shared the uh, link to uh guest flow so you said you said it's in a beta test so what how many um, sort of members you know users do you have on the platform and yeah i think we've probably got about 10 businesses on it so far um yeah. so and it really is um since two weeks 
yeah in the yeah in the first two weeks and we're not we're not marketing really anywhere we're not advertising it it is um we've had some people come to us organically they found our website somehow but um it's much more we're hand holding people on and, and making sure they 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 get it and they like it and they're on free trials and everyone's continuing so far we've not had a single person uh come off it which uh which is good 100 percent um 100 percent retainment which is fantastic awesome. and how many units uh they have on average is it for can if i've got one unit can i come and use guest flow or do i need to yeah absolutely it's useful for one unit it's useful if you because if you've got one unit you've probably got a business you've probably got or a job you've got other things going on so you want to be able to just pick it up and put it down and and, and work out where you were when you were last actively working on it so it's good for single hosts and, and um, those with with um just a small collection of units that are handling it all themselves and in fact we've got um just that we've got a guy who does that um in fact i've got in uh, i've got a hard cut off at 3 p.m because i'm chatting i'm chatting to that exact person he's got four units um yeah. runs it all himself um but then we've got um we've got another client who's just got one unit so those guys find benefit from it because it's just apart from anything being able to remind themselves what they've done with each of the reservations um, all the way up to agents with 120 plus units and that's not including my own business it's separate to mine and so when you've got a team, lots of team members lots of moving parts that's where it really starts coming into its own yeah awesome uh sarah is asking uh, i offer staging in the midlands and will be really happy to chat through any requirements i've got a good network of other staging companies across the country so can make recommendation for other areas too so yeah indeed speaks to sarah she's uh i know i've only heard good things about uh, what she does so yeah to get in touch with her sorry about the background noise uh mike is asking do you have to be based full-time in the uk so i'm not sure if this is to be a to be an SA operator or is it to attend uh to attend the the training i believe the the your one day thingy in august is is online so you should be, at, be able to attend from anywhere but in terms do, do you do you see realistic uh, people setting up SA companies rent to SA management companies and being based uh, abroad um it's not impossible i mean bear in mind i had a very challenging full-time job when i got when i set up although that said i, I did have to visit site uh, initially i think it's only going to increase your uh, costs because you're going to be relying on someone on the ground but if you've got a good housekeeper and a good handyman you can you can run the business from anywhere in the world <laughs> awesome shanae is asking what is the upsell after the one day uh, training please uh, so what is the training that you uh, offer generally uh, after that uh so obviously we've got the day get, get the foundations give you everything that you need there and then the only thing that will be on offer that day is the ultimate service accommodation business builder which is our uh, three-month training package which is our 88 module roadmap including group coaching calls but some people will be able to take away from the one day and go and get started other people need more support or want more support uh, and want to be a part of a community so that is the only thing there we make no bones about that fact but it's not going to be pitched all day long it'll be offered at the end of it all for anybody that wants to take us up on it but we are about giving massive value throughout the course of the one day workshop yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and I, I mean we've seen that with just one hour so and it's the usual things like we, there's the knowledge and the there's the implementation and we find that uh, it's always good to have a holding hand and someone you can speak to or a group you can be in to ask those questions as and when uh the the things uh, occur so yeah i would expect something like that thank you uh Alzheimer is asking uh, which automated companies so you uh yeah for the nightly rates uh uh changes and you put very kindly price labs is that the only one best one um there's yeah there's quite a few that do it that's my preferred one so okay awesome uh david he says hi uh views the property stages for furniture and soft furnishing uh, for all my essays thanks a lot david for sharing that uh mayura is asking or in saying any tips on speaking to a seller to secure lease options uh, for sa please Mark, sorry, say that again. Any tips uh, when speaking with sellers to secure lease options? Uh, um, yeah, for service accommodations. The, the way I understand it is, uh, if they're happy for rent to rent, this is your, you know, a good way in uh, as a first uh, first stage. And then if you provide a good service, a lot of the, a lot of those you can turn into lease options. And I know this is something you've done, Mark, haven't you? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Sorry, I, you just broke up when you were saying that. Then it's, it was my end as well because I was messing around with the internet. Um, no, so the the best way to get a purchase lease option in no matter what you're doing is just asking if they are willing to sell the property. If it's obviously if it's not for sale in the future. So anytime I do a rent to rent or anything like that, all I say to people is, "Are you interested in selling the property in the future? If so, you know we could always lock a price in now." We then don't have to have estate agents fees. In a lot of the cases, we can take care of the solicitor's fees. You obviously have your own solicitor, but we'll look after that for you, the cost of that, and we can lock a price in now. So, you know, Gilliam hit the nail on the head then. If you're going to do rent to rent, then if they're open to that, and then they're open to selling it, and not everybody wants to do that straight away. I've had one person where I've done a rent to rent deal with them and locked in a purchase lease option from the day one. I've had another one where six months down the line, they came back to me and said, we might be interested in selling. And then we locked in a, a, a deal there. Uh, and and the, the last purchase lease option that I've currently done at the moment is the house that I currently live in. Awesome. Uh, so Wendy can't make the, f the fifth, so you'll have to buy the 997 uh, to exit the recording at some point. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, so yeah, we'll see what we can do. Henri is asking, some of us may have booked holidays with family on the 5th of August. Oh, wow. So actually, it's not just Wendy. It's quite a few. Um, uh, so are there any other dates, guys, for this? Uh, currently, we don't have any other dates. We are going to offer the recording out as a training package, which if you wanted to lock that in uh, now, you could do. There's a 14-day money-back guarantee on that as well. So you can watch it. If you're not happy with the training that we provide you, we'll give you a money back because we're not here to... Okay, so can can they get access to recording for the today's price? Is that what you're saying? Uh, they can do it. There is a, a, a price for that. It's not $49.99 for the recording. It's £97 uh, for the recording. Okay. So if they wanted that, then uh, just reach out to me and we can lock that in for you. What's now. the best way to reach out to you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if you want to email me, I, in fact, I'll put an email in the chat box to everybody. Yeah. Um, and if, if anybody wants that, then we'll reach out to you and sort that out for you. Okay. Well, we so. probably will do this again, but um, we tend, you know, if we do this now in August, we might do something near the end of the year as well, um, because, you know, we, we, this is the first one that we've run. So we just want to make sure that it's value to people that, it, you know, people want yeah. it, people want but, this sort of And thing. I know you create these uh, to record it. So you, you record it, but you might as well have an audience when you record it. Like this, you can make it current with people's question. I know you use this to build your, you know, like the training modules and stuff. So yeah, I don't assume you run these every 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 week. So okay, uh, that's cool, David. And we we're gonna have to cut off before three. Any remaining questions? What I'll do, I'll I'll I'll, I'll pass over to Graham and Mark. And then if it's okay, you can record us a bit of a. Uh, a bit of something to cover the next question and we'll put it in the prop filter facebook group if that's okay i'll rattle through as many questions as i can in the next uh, sort of three minutes and then uh, we'll sort of wrap up because we've well overrun <laughs> already so david is asking for my sa revenue management i use price lab i recommend them okay so that's the same as what graham was saying uh, fiona uh, we may have covered uh, we may have covered that with uh, revenue management yeah possibly Felix, uh, does it make sense to systemize with only one unit or no plans to scale? And no plans to scale. Well, that's interesting. I mean, uh, yeah, you still want to be systemized because you're not going to be needing as much time on it, right? You need to know what you're doing. And then uh, you never know when you are going to need to step away from your business and have other people run it for you. So if it's already mapped out what everything, what, what needs to happen, um, you know, it can just tick to a beat without you. Awesome. Okay, so uh, I'll just sort of, uh, thanks a lot for that. I sort of wrap up and I'll send you the few questions we've got left. Uh, and obviously this recording will be in the Property Filter Facebook group for people who want to uh, look at it back as well as in the as in the success base. So I really want to thank you guys. Thank you for the value you've shared today. Really uh, awesome and always good to, to have you. So thanks a lot for joining us today, sharing the value. Thanks a lot for all of you who joined live today. Uh, ask those uh, great questions. Reach out to uh, Mark if you have any any follow-on question and things like that. Do save the link. Uh, book yourself for the fifth of uh, of uh, of uh, August. I think it's really awesome value. And uh, yeah, check yeah check check these guys out. You know they are always up to really good. So in the meantime, visit your property filter account. Log on to your uh, property filter dashboard and check out your deal. Uh, find a blueprint, define your goldmine area, engage with motivated sellers, asset prop assess properties in seconds, load your pipeline and make deals. 
have an endless supply of deals, join the top 1% and become a high achiever deal finder. I've, I really hope you've enjoyed today's Deal Finder Corner with our amazing guest and I look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you very much. Have a very good week.